He used to be called Citizen 625726. He used to call himself Unbroken. When he left his dystopian city behind, he thought he had found paradise. What he found was uglier and darker than anything he could have imagined. This is his story. This is Inferior. Now available at Amazon, Smashwords, and at studiobrainstorm.net. Links in the description. The final decades of the first century and the beginnings of the second would be an eventful time for the Emerald Empire of Rokugan. There was the death of Emerald Champion Kakita Shimizu in the year 79. He would be succeeded, after a third Emerald Tournament, by his nephew, Doji Sasumagi. In the year 87, the swordsmiths of the Agasha family successfully mastered the art of combining hard and soft steel to create the so-called perfect steel for sword making. This they would keep secret for many years until it was somehow leaked to the other great clans, ostensibly by the Scorpion. The Agasha would make a second great contribution in 94 when they attended the Sixth Great Convocation. The Great Convocation was an event where all of the greatest holy men and magic users of the Empire would gather together to pool their knowledge and discuss the teachings of Shinsei. The first Great Convocation had been held in 44, but the sixth was the first time in which the normally reclusive Dragon Clan was represented by their dedicated Shugenja family, the Agasha. The Agasha provided their own unique and rather eccentric perspective on spirituality and the nature of magic, and would help amend the rules of the Path of Purification, allowing for retreat into the mountains as a valid means of attaining enlightenment. Just one year later, in 95, the controversial crab shugenja Kuni Nakanu began his life's work of studying the corrupting influence of the Shadowlands. Five years later, in 100, he successfully isolated and identified the nature of this magical corruptive vector, which he named the Taint. However, this period was not just one of transition from one century to the next, it was also the passing of the torch from one generation to another. In the year 80, after a long and successful career of slaying monsters and carving castles from mountains with his lightning powers, Hida Osanowo, champion of the Crab Clan, celebrated the coming of age of his two sons, Kaimetsuo, the son of his wife, Matsu Kyoda, and Kenzan, the son of a peasant girl whom the clan champion had accidentally impregnated while in a drunken stupor. Osanowo had treated both sons equally as they'd grown up, but everyone assumed on that day that Kaimetsuo would be the one chosen to succeed his father. Not only was Kaimetsuo older, but he was also the superior fighter, having never lost a single sparring match against his half-brother. Although that had never stopped Kenzan from challenging his brother to a rematch over and over and over again. Thus, the entire clan was shocked when Osanowo declared that Kenzan would be his successor instead. Osanowo reasoned that Kenzan, who had always lost but never given up, was better suited to lead the crab in their war against the monsters of the Shadowlands. By contrast, Kaimetsuo, who had only ever known victory, was unsuited to lead them in a war that would have no victory because it had no end. The vast majority of the clan accepted Osanowo's argument, but the decision still angered Kaimetsuo and enraged his lion mother. Unwilling to endure the dishonor of seeing Kaimetsuo passed over in this way for Kenzan, Kyoda chose to go into voluntary exile, along with her son, her lion retainers, and the few crab samurai that backed their claim. Eventually, this little group settled on the islands of Spice and Silk, and as the years went by, Kaimetsuo eventually let go of his anger towards his father's decision and instead chose to forge his own destiny, thus leading to the creation of the Mantis Clan. A less encouraging event occurred in 83 with the disappearance of the Scorpion Clan founder, Bayushi, the first kami to disappear from Rokugan since the departure of Shinjo and the bulk of the Kirin Clan. Why did this happen? You remember how back when Shosuro had faked her death and assumed the identity of Soshi? Well, back in the year 82, Soshi disappeared. 
See, back when Shosuro had been fleeing the Shadowlands along with Shinsei on the Day of Thunder, carrying the Black Scrolls and pursued by the first Oni, she had been contacted by the Lying Darkness, essentially Legend of the Five Rings version of the Nothing from the NeverEnding story. Among other things, it offered to help her escape and had given her a powerful but cursed artifact known as the Obsidian Hand, which contained a little of its own essence. Over the years, the Hand had slowly but subtly corrupted Shosuro. By the time she realized what was happening, it was far too late. She then disappeared, leaving leadership of the Soshi family to hers and possibly Bayushi's son, Soshi Burezu, and had approached Togashi, Kami founder of the Dragon Clan and by far the most powerful spiritual and magical being in the Empire. Despite his power and his best efforts, however, Togashi could not remove the corruption. In the end, he was forced to imprison Shosuro inside of a magic crystal to prevent the corruption from spreading any further. Bayushi did not blame his brother for what he'd done, but he still could not bear life without his beloved. And so, the following year, he disappeared forever. He left his, and possibly Shosuro's other son, Bayushi Ubane, to succeed him as Bayushi family daimyo and scorpion clan champion, and left behind only a mask and the words, I've lost her forever. Meanwhile, back up in the Northwest, things were not going well for the remaining members of the Kirin clan. Recognizing just how painfully underdefended the region was, various bandit gangs and barbarian tribes from beyond the borders had begun raiding the region with abandon. Helpless to prevent the constant incursion, the Kirin clan remnant appealed to the Emperor for help, who sent in the Lion clan to clean house, which they did very effectively. Unfortunately, the Kirin Remnant's relief proved short-lived, as the Lion Clan became convinced that they were now too weak to do their job and successfully persuaded the Emperor to give all the Kirin Clan lands to them. As for the Kirin Remnant, they were forcibly relocated south to the environs of Kitsune no Mori Forest. There, after establishing close ties with the local spirits, including the shape-shifting Kitsune, in the year 90, which saw the death of Wiku the Serene Prophet, they were reborn as the Fox Clan. And though the Mantis preceded them by a decade, they were the first minor clan to be officially recognized as such by the Emperor. Meanwhile, Emperor Genji remained concerned about the northwestern border, as he figured the Lion, for all their battle prowess, were not as familiar with the terrain as the Kirin Remnant had been. But instead of restoring the Kirin Remnant, now the Fox Clan, to their old lands, the Emperor instead decided to create another minor clan to guard the border. He arranged for a wrestling competition to decide the matter, and thus, from the family and retainers of the winner of that competition, Hida Domogu of the Crab Clan, and the family and retainers of the runner-up, Shinjo Mako, was born the Badger Clan. Thus, in the year 110, the new clan promptly went north, established the castle of Shiro Ichiro, one of the strongest fortifications in the whole empire, and settled in to begin their long northern vigil. But speaking of the Mantis, in the year 97, their founder and clan champion Kaimetsuo received a shocking message from his half-brother Hida Kenzan. Their father, Hida Osanowo, Lord of the Crab Clan, had been assassinated. According to accounts, a mysterious shadowy figure had attempted to blackmail the son of Hida with embarrassing information regarding one of his most trusted generals. Osanowo, as one would expect from the Lord of the Crab Clan, had simply laughed at this feeble attempt to threaten him and attack the assassin head-on. More fool him, as it turned out, since the assassin had a poisoned blade. With Hida himself having long since gone into seclusion and with Kenzan struggling to run things back home, he had appealed to his half-brother in order to fulfill the obligation of filial piety and avenge their father's death. Kaimetsuo had immediately accepted the task and pursued the assassin all the way up to the farthest northeastern corner of the empire, where at last the murderer found sanctuary in the phoenix fortress of Shiroshiba. Initially, when Kaimetsuo stood before the fortress gate and demanded that his father's assassin be surrendered to him, the phoenix refused. Since they'd already granted him shelter and promised protection, it would be a great stain upon their honor to give him up now. Enraged by this response, Kaimetsuo is said to have called upon his father's spirit to aid him, at which point a massive bolt of lightning struck the towers of Shiroshiba, 
Persuaded that this was an omen, the Phoenix Garrison promptly surrendered the killer to Kaimetsuo's bloody vengeance. The act of successfully avenging his father's murder helped mend the rift between Kaimetsuo and his half-brother Kenzan, and ever since, the Crab and Mantis clans would enjoy a very close relationship. What's more, reports of the event eventually convinced Emperor Genji that Hida Osanawo had not merely passed on, but ascended to a kind of minor godhood, and officially recognized the former clan champion as the Fortune of Fire and Thunder. Because Kaimetsuo had been the one to avenge him, it was said in the centuries that followed that Osanawo was the special patron of the Mantis, which began the clan's intense cultural association with lightning and thunder. This was reinforced in the year 107, when a group of seven Mantis warriors exploring a new island fell asleep and shared the same dream. Osanawo showed the sleeping warriors a vision of the Mantis clan spreading not only across the islands of Spice and Silk, but across all the Empire, and even a vision of a Mantis Emperor ruling from a palace of diamond. The fortune declared, From the City of Lightning will the Mantis grow. Then a lightning bolt awoke the seven warriors. The site where that bolt had struck would be the site of the Temple of Lightning and around it would be built the prophesied City of Lightning, Toshi no Inazuma. The death of the first century and the birth of the second would be heralded by the passing of gods. Okoto One-Eye, founding Kami of the Lion Clan, perished in the year 99 in battle with the monstrous Tsuno. Togashi of the Dragon Clan was pronounced dead in 101, and Doji of the Crane disappeared in 102. Hida was the only kami that remained, and he remained in seclusion, having distanced himself utterly from worldly affairs. In the year 105, after two decades of studying the taint and its effects upon the living and the dead, Kuni Nakanu met his own death. Having discovered, among other things, that the taint could reanimate the corpses of the dead as zombies, Nakanu had sought for a way to control them, thus turning the Shadowlands' own corruption against it. Unfortunately, his experimental spell went awry and destroyed his own fortress. Nakanu himself was eaten alive by the zombies he'd been trying to control with his spell, and they in turn spread across crab lands, sowing death and destruction until they were finally put down. Thus, while his research into the taint was invaluable, and copies of his journals would be kept in the Imperial Archives, the name of Kuni Nakanu was forever blackened in the eyes of the Kuni family and the Crab Clan. But it was not all bad news. In the year 108, Emerald Champion Doji Sasumagi retired, and the fourth Emerald Tournament was won by Akoto Saito, the first non-crane to hold the office of Emerald Champion. Meanwhile, the year 115 saw the birth of Kuni Genai, one of the greatest artists in the history of the Empire. Now, while the idea of a crab artist sounds strange, Kuni Genai was no crane painter of frivolities. Like all crab samurai, Kuni's passion had a practical bent. Above all else, Kuni loved nature, and he loved to draw nature, whether it be plants, animals, or natural objects. But in addition to his paintings, he always included short descriptions of what he was depicting. Thus, his work was the first cohesive attempt to catalog all natural life within the Empire. So great was the artist's passion that he eventually chose to become a ronin so that he could be excused from his clan obligations and continue his work. Many in the clan were outraged by this, but eventually Genai's work caught the eye of Emperor Genji. He was so impressed by the young man's work that he chose to restore Genai's status as a full member of the clan. But that was small potatoes compared to what was to come. For a few decades later, the Empire would undergo its most comprehensive military and legal reforms thanks to a most unlikely of partnerships between a crane and a scorpion. Whew, this was a lot harder than I thought, and took a lot longer than I thought. I'm afraid I'm going to have to cut this particular series short for now. However, there will be no lore poll this month. Instead, after I do my Star Wars videos in August, I will return to Legend of the Five Rings in September and complete the Reign of Genji. Until then. <laughs>